Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to interview number five of Nerf Control Week, um, which is an event we're doing here at OC University, which in case you guys don't know, OC University is this improvement focused OSU hub. It's this community where our goal is to bridge that gap between top player advice and the general community. So in keeping with that theme, this week we have been doing a series of interviews where we try to dive very deep into a specific topic. So this week we've been doing interviews all about nerve control. And at the end of the week, we will have a sort of final interview where we get multiple of the guests from this week together to talk to each other about the different points that we had brought up in our own individual interviews as a way to wrap up the topic for the week. So today I have with me Frankie, Canadian superstar. Hello, hello. Hello. So um, as a quick introduction for those people who may not be super familiar with you, um, could you give a brief introduction of who you are in the community and what people probably know you as? Um, well, I am I'm Frankie. Um, <laughs> a lot of people probably know me from my old name, Repression, that I recently changed. Um, and yeah, I think most people in the community see me as like a uh, stream player or like high ack HDHR, that kind of thing. Right. I, I, um, I think that's that's definitely what I have started to recognize you as as well. With I, I think you you've set a lot of um really I, I almost want to say world class. I'm not really sure what other word to use. Um <laughs> like very memorable scores um in the last couple months especially. So um Yeah. Yeah. So just regarding nerve control, I think let's try to start very basic. And could you just define very briefly? Or simply, like, what is nerve control to you? Well, to me, um, I guess nerve control is really just your ability to, like, um, I mean, just plain and simple, just be able to not get nervous and mess up because of nerves while you're playing. Oh, um, okay. Do you find a distinction in that sense between getting nervous and then actually messing up because you get nervous? Uh, like, what, what, what do you oh, mean? <laughs> um, like, do you, do you find that there are cases where you get nervous, but you're still able to oh, not okay. start playing poorly because of it? Um, for me, not really. I feel like, like, nervous like being nervous and you know like being nervous comes with playing worse or like shaking or whatever oh okay um every time for me but so, i don't think it's like that for everyone so in that sense i think um well for, for my my understanding so far is that nerve control really comes down to like avoiding that feeling of getting nervous in the first place yeah exactly um so can you talk a bit about like how like so, some different strategies that you've um, experimented with maybe or that you've found success with to not really get as nervous, especially I think um, in recent months, I'm sure like as you've sort of built a name for yourself within the community, like has that expectation from the community like affected you in any way, like mentality wise or like thinking about certain things when you're holding scores or something like that. And is there anything that you do to try to mitigate that so you don't really get nervous? Um, honestly, I think like <laughs> I think my nerve control is really bad. <laughs> um, like I, I I think like a lot of people seem to think that I don't get nervous because I don't shake or like I don't I don't know, like that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like for me, not getting nervous is kind of just a luck thing. Like if I just happen to not be thinking too much while I'm playing or, um, oh, so, I mean, has that always been the case, especially with, um, yeah, not getting yeah, shaky? Always, 
Yeah, pretty much. Oh, like if I'm thinking too much about my gameplay, I will I'll get ner nervous no matter what. It's like I got to just distract myself and think about other stuff. <laughs> oh, do, do you have any um, ways that you typically like to go about like distracting yourself that tends to work for you? Um, well, I think one thing that's like, I, I feel like if I play the same map over and over, um, like, I don't really know how to say it. Um, like, I, I feel like I don't get as nervous when I'm on my first few tries on the map. Um, like oh, if I've played it, if I've played it a lot, then like I know what's coming up and I'm thinking consciously about like whatever, you know, like, oh, there's a there's a hard part here or like, I, I don't know. <laughs> right. So sort of having an expectation of how the map goes, like the more you play a map, you, you sort of have um, a more clear idea of like what parts in this map are easy and what parts in this map are hard yeah exactly i and, feel like for me like not knowing if a hard part's coming up like i'll be able to hit it just fine but you know if if i know it's there then i'm like constantly preparing and overthinking it before it even comes up oh okay and so i think that that actually leads me into asking about like when you practice for tournaments is that something that you try to avoid like not learning a map too much so that that doesn't uh, start to happen i think i think there's like kind of a sweet spot like obviously i'm not going to play the same map a hundred times <laughs> right um, unless it's really just like a memory map but um yeah i don't know I'll, I'll play them through like two or three times and go like okay I, I i know i can play this map or i know i can't play this map so i'll ban it or you know, oh, they don't okay. pick it or whatever. Do you ever like try to stop yourself or like you notice at some point like I'm thinking too hard about these patterns now, so I should stop playing this map? Yes. Yep. Okay. So is is that sort of realization um like one of those things that makes you like stop practicing a certain map for a match? Like once you start feeling that way that you're starting to learn the map a bit too much then that's yeah. like your cue yeah, to stop I'll, I'll, yeah exactly i'll just move on to something else oh okay so then in <clears throat> in tournaments themselves um do you find that the way that you control your nerves is different compared to in solo uh yeah kind of um i don't know i think like in tournaments it it's like I, I I get more nervous towards like the first few maps that I play in a tournament because I don't know like everything's fresh like I I know that I I don't <laughs> sorry I'm not very good at explaining. oh no no you're good um like the first few maps I'll get more nervous and then like as it goes on I'll be like I'll get used to it and you know be more chill oh um right I I think that that's something that. I think actually happens to a lot of people where they get most nervous in the first few maps and then um, mm -hmm. it sort of goes away as they get more comfortable with the like I guess environment or easing themselves into the lobby and things like that yeah um, so do you find actually do you find that there are some situations where that doesn't really happen to you like some matches where you don't get nervous even in the first maps um, I think if it's a match that like I know that I'm gonna win, like it's early stage and I have a high seed, something like that. Right. I'll just go in and like I, I usually don't even really practice that much and I I don't get nervous. Ooh. Uh do you find that like playing with certain teammates as well, like being on certain teams has helped with like controlling your nerves or like not feeling as pressured about the situation? I think if it's um, like if I'm on a team where, you know, I'm the the like the carry player, I guess I will definitely get more nervous even in early stages. And like if I'm on like a team, I, I, I don't really know how to say it, but like where I know that I'm not the best player, 
I'll be more right. relaxed because I know like, you know, even if I mess up, my team still got me. Oh, uh, so, so like the, the pressure isn't on you. So like, when, when you yeah, don't have exactly. that, that expectation that like, if you're not the one playing well, then your team's not going to win. And it's going to, the, the blame is, is to some extent going to fall on you. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so do you find that like those expectations, um, or do you, do you get like the similar sense of expectation sometimes in in solo play? Even like comparing to like maybe not the expectations of others, but the expectations of what you think you should be capable of in solo play. Um, actually, yeah. I mean, sometimes I think in solo play, like I'll be playing a map, and you know, if it's like just a really easy map for me, and I just for some reason can't if i can't get the score then i'll get really frustrated like why can i not <laughs> oh I not right get the score so yeah I, I guess kind of it's it's similar in solo in that way but in it, terms of nerves not really i think it's yeah okay so nerves still i i think um what i'm sort of gathering so far is that it comes down to like your own understanding within a map of which parts are like easier or harder for you to hit and like having an expectation of how the map goes is actually detrimental to some extent because it yes. makes you anticipate those certain sections mm -hmm. uh do you, so do you find that like usually if your nerves on a map go up then like it, it's like the same it like you're how do i read this like nerves and mind block tend to like have the same root cause to you, I guess. Yeah, yeah, actually. But can you, um, I I guess, sort of talk about that? Um, because my understanding, I guess, is that like as you get used to how a map goes, then you get a better understanding of which parts are easy and hard, and then you tend to over start overthinking the hard parts and that sort of leads to nerves. Um, and that, yeah. that also more or less, it, um, at least from my understanding, is how mind block sort of works as well, where you tend to overestimate or like sort of anticipate those hard sections a bit too much and then um, sort of sometimes freeze up, sometimes you don't even know what happens, but you just kind of miss on those parts. Yep, yeah. Definitely. Um, I think something actually, I don't know if other people experience this, but like, um, like I, I feel like w if I get mind blocked on a map, like I'll kind of like in terms of nerves, I'll treat it the same as a uh, hard part. So like, even if it's really easy for most people, um, if I randomly hit it on, on some run, then I'll get nervous after it, even if it's not like, the diff spike of the map or whatever it like um oh i don't really i don't yeah. know if that makes sense. no no yeah i i know what you mean so like parts that you get mind blocked on are just as nerve-wracking for you as like the yes. hardest part of yeah, a map exactly i see uh so do you find that there are like any ways that you try to overcome that especially um i'm sure that there's there are some maps that you've grinded for scores for a really long time so do you find that there's anything that works for you to overcome like those mind blocks or like nerves about hard parts or is it really just a matter of like getting lucky getting that one run where you happen to not get nervous well yeah i mean it's not what a lot of people want to hear but <laughs> really it is a matter of for me it's either i'll get lucky or um I just stop playing the map for a long time, like maybe a month or whatever, and then come back to it. And then, you know, maybe I'll forget where my mind block is or, um, you know, I'll just happen to get lucky. That's kind of what happened for Road of Resistance. Like I was grinding it a lot for a long time. Um, right. And I got mind blocked on the like slider parts. And I was just so frustrated. Every run just was dying because I was missing on those sliders. And I'm like, you know what? whatever and then i like would play it once every now and then and then i happened to <laughs> i happened to get lucky oh kind of see it. yeah so, so it ultimately comes down to 
I guess like t- taking a break when you need to, and then when you come back, I I feel like when you come back, there's some ways that you can like, because uh, at, at least in my experience, I find that when I come back to a map that I had like a mind block pattern on, and then I hit it sight read or something, then I'm usually able to convince myself something like, oh, maybe like that pattern isn't as hard as I thought it used to be or something like that. And then the mind block sort of doesn't come back because of that. Is that something that happens to you as well? Or like when you come back, like, like, let's say for road of resistance, like after you came back to the map and then you like were able to hit those slider sections were like, did the mind block come back? Like, oh, I remember I used to be mind blocked on this. Or did you just sort of be like, okay, I guess this isn't as hard as I thought it was? Um, okay, that, de- that definitely didn't happen for Road of Resistance. It does happen occasionally, but <laughs> um, it's, it's definitely rare. Like, I feel like if I forget where my mind block is, as soon as I see it for the first time again, I'm like, ah, yes, <laughs> that's, that's, that's where I used to be mind blocked, and I'm still going to be screwed over by that part. Oh, I keep no. playing the map. Yeah. Um so do you find also that like when like when you're not holding an FC or like a very like maybe like a lower ack score or something that like mind block or or nerves tend to go away a little? Yeah, definitely. If I miss early like I'm just fine for the rest of the map. Oh, so uh cuz I I know and I'm I'm not sure if this is something you've messed with as well, but in tournaments especially, do you ever like maybe like drop back intentionally or something? Uh, <laughs> I I think it's a little different in tournaments for me. I don't think like Oh really? Even if I'm playing badly on a map in a tournament, I'll still get nervous. Like I don't think my performance affects my nerves in tournaments, weirdly enough. Oh, okay. Um yeah, or n- maybe not as much. It does a little bit, but um, yeah, no, I, I've I've never actually tried the. I I don't know okay. <laughs> what it's called, no. but yeah, like sometimes people just miss the first note or whatever. Right. Okay. But, just I, I don't know. I was just curious. No. Um, but I I do want to ask regarding tournaments. Um, if like you tended to be more nervous in your first tournaments than like than you get nowadays in tournaments yeah i think i've improved a lot in that sense actually so Um, yeah can can you just i guess explore like your history with nerves in tournaments and like things that you've sort of gotten better at or try to convince yourself of that has helped you with nerves in tournament play um well, so when I started tournaments, my first tournament ever was um, OCL, uh, Collegiate League, in oh. 2019. Um, okay. And I had no idea how tournaments even worked back then. Like, I, I didn't, I, I, I knew nothing and basically just relied on my teammate for the, like, strategy and stuff. But, like, back then, every single map I played, like, I was so nervous and... I remembered like practicing each map in the pool like over and over like getting 10 local scores on each map before the match and it wow. just it obviously didn't even help um but like yeah as time went on I got more used to it um I don't think I did anything specifically it's really just I I got used to it and you know if you mess up you mess up it's it's whatever it'll happen to everybody I think maybe just telling myself that is it helps. You don't have to play perfectly every time. Oh, so that that sort of pressure that you would put on yourself that like you have to play perfectly or else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. And, and from what it sounds like you're saying that like over time that has sort of gone away as you get more yeah. comfortable with tournaments. Yep. I see, I see. Um, and speaking of that as well, like, do you find that, like, when the leaderboard pops up during breaks, for example, um, is that something that 
you actually like is that something that you skin out first of all um no okay i don't so do you um i guess have any thoughts on like how the leaderboard um could affect nerves and like i guess some ways to make it not be as bad um well i think for me like if i look at the leaderboards and see that it's really really close and like you know i'm i'm the only one holding combo then i'll definitely get more nervous um uh yeah i think if it really affects you that much i think you should just skin it out but i i don't um i, I don't know I, I don't think it affects me that much oh so do do you ultimately i guess just you think it's just preference or do you think that like i think it's preference yeah okay um so also do you find that when you do get nervous and, and this is i guess both in solo play and tournament play but um i guess like does your finger control sometimes like start to fall apart or like your um yeah like your your tapping hand especially tends to not cooperate with you is, is that something you've you've had to deal with uh yeah kind of only if it's like if my nerves are really really bad then yeah but that doesn't like usually it's my aim that suffers oh my tapping yeah so aim in the sense of i, I don't think shaking I, I think you said that you tend to not really shake that much um i mean i do shake but i think it's just less visible because i use a huge area Oh, okay. Is that something you'd recommend? Um, Absolutely. I think <laughs> everyone should use a. Everyone should use full area, first of all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm not sure what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, do you, do you find I guess that like, is it more so your aim hand that just doesn't really cooperate with you or, um. I guess your reading sometimes or like your focus tends to fall apart or what what do you think i think actually my focus gets better because i'm more conscious like of what i'm doing so like i, I i'm not gonna miss because i'm not focused i'm gonna miss because i've shaked off or um, oh okay yeah that kind of thing i see so okay that that is interesting and i think that especially I think is good in a sense uh, that seems like a double-edged sword um yeah kind of <laughs> to some extent es especially i think in tournament play because sometimes uh at least personally i find that um like focus is a super important aspect of like yeah definitely right c consistency and, and tournament play and things like that so do, do you feel like sometimes nerves actually tend to work in your favor because of that actually yeah i do um i feel like sometimes if it's like like i said that if it's like an easy match or like a match that i know that i'm gonna win i don't get that nervous sometimes i'll just like shit miss out of nowhere just because i'm not paying attention and i feel like if i'm nervous then i'm definitely paying attention <laughs> and i won't right. get as many of those dumb misses like that so get getting nervous does sometimes help with like those random misses but every time you do miss it it's um uh, it, it feels a little worse so do, yeah do you tend to have kind of. like um i guess like spirals of like you're nervous and then you miss and then you get frustrated and then you get more nervous because you missed or do you do you have some or i guess like does that not really happen to you like do you have some sort of way to not end up in that cycle uh could, could you explain oh, that again? okay yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like um do, do you ever get this sense like when you do miss when you're nervous then like you sort of get frustrated because of that especially in tournaments and then that sort of causes a spiral okay yeah that like you start getting um, more nervous and then uh, do, do you does first of all does that happen to you or like do you have any ways to prevent yourself from getting into that cycle um yeah it does happen to me sometimes again i think it's i don't think it really has anything to do with nerves i think it's um 
like I said, well, again, like if it's a match that I know that I'm going to win and I'm not nervous, I'll miss randomly and get frustrated <laughs> um, because I'm not focusing. But yeah, so, sometimes it'll kind of just like get me to realize, yo, wake up like you're playing a tournament. You got to focus. Oh. So I think really just um, I'm I don't do this every time, but I think you should treat every tournament match like like the same like you shouldn't be like oh i'm I'm gonna win this match no matter what because you know you're gonna give away easy points or whatever if you don't care that much right you just never know what's gonna happen yeah exactly and like comebacks can happen even if you're up five points or whatever right and it sucks that's the worst feeling <laughs> but i mean and the other way around you could be down zero five and yeah exactly right you, know, you should never give up so is that th those sorts of mentalities, I guess, are, is that something that helps you prevent being nervous in those situations? Like when you are, um, let's say like zero five or five zero, um, do you find that like keeping that mentality that like anything can happen and like you still need to do your best? Does that tend to help with your nerves or actually make it yeah, worse? I think it does. I think it does help. Oh, um, yeah, I. <laughs> I mean, I have, like, I don't know. I, I actually don't know what I was about to say. Oh, okay. You're good. <laughs> you're good. You're good. Um, so I I did want to ask as well, because I find that a lot of people have questions about um, nerve control, specifically for longer maps. Um, like, oh, I'm, like, I don't have, like, a 1,000 combo FC. For example, because like every time I get one thousand combo, then like I start getting really nervous. Like, do you have any mm -hmm. any tips for those sorts of players that are struggling for, especially longer map nerve control, like consistency wise? Um, that's that's actually a tricky one for me because I I don't really know what I did to get better at that, other than just playing more long maps. Because like to me. I don't really get nervous at a certain combo number. I get nervous like at a percentage through the map. Like I'll get nervous like three quarters in or whatever. Um, no matter how long the map is. Like even on a 40 second map, I will oh. get nervous like 30 seconds in or whatever. But I guess like they don't have as much time to manifest. Um, right. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure what kind of advice to give for that actually. But did did you have a similar experience? Do you think like when you first started playing longer maps? Uh, I honestly I don't think so. I I think I like it was so long ago. I don't really remember because I've oh, been playing long maps for that, such a long time. Right, that, that is okay. Um, but do you? So you sort of treat like when you get nervous in a map it's not really necessarily because of how long the map is but maybe like how how difficult the map is for you or like your own expectation of how easy that map yeah, is yeah exactly yeah oh okay that so it definitely affects it a lot more i see so there, there's really no difference between a map that's like one minute long and hard for you versus like five minutes long and hard for you yeah i exactly. see exactly so in in that sense, I, I think um one one thing that you can probably take from that is that like if you don't get nervous on maps that are hard for you but only one minute, then in that same sense you shouldn't really get nervous on maps that are five minutes and hard for you. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um so I do have uh, I think I wanted to go back to when you mentioned like nerves actually helping you focus. Um, have you ever found that like when you get nervous, you tend to focus too hard and you start to like over focus? Um, especially maybe in, in tournament play? Uh, sometimes, yeah. I think that's more just like. I, again, it's like if I've practiced the map too much and I'm um, 
like I'm focusing too hard on the patterns that I've come up or that, that come up. Um, and like, if I were to just like relax and not think about it too much, hit them normally, it'd be fine. But yeah, if I just, if I focus too hard, yeah, I think it can definitely. Oh, do, do, um, um, yeah, do, do you have any thoughts on, I guess, how to avoid that sort of over focusing cycle? Really, I th I think it's for me. It's just don't practice a map too much. Um, that for tournaments at least, if if I practice a map too much, that will happen a lot more. Um, I I, I don't really know what to say. Oh, okay, that that's that. okay. Um, okay, so I I guess to sort of summarize, it it, it seems like um. A lot of this, I I think, t tends to come down to not like giving yourself the like information because you getting nervous seems to come from like having expectations about the map, um, yeah. yeah, and definitely, and so like getting rid of those expectations can sometimes help with um with not getting nervous. Do you find yeah. that like there are certain maps where like for example that there are certain maps that you know are very hyped up um like I guess we, we can probably use road of resistance as an example or or some other similarly like mm -hmm. very popular maps that you know that there there's definitely been a lot of community hype around over the years. Do you find that just that expectation of the map itself can make those like um those nerves like come a bit more quickly if that makes sense yes yeah i think uh i think that definitely does happen for me um yeah like in road of resistance uh i feel like i i get nervous like not even halfway in <laughs> just because of like oh holy shit i'm fc in road <laughs> of resistance um yeah I, I think it definitely does affect it but you do tend to find ways to still play well um despite that is that just a matter of of playing the map enough times to where you just happen to get that one run where your your brain's kind of off yeah like r really it's just i don't think about it too hard or i try not to um and if i am like thinking about it too much then i know i'm not like i'm just not gonna fc it <laughs> and and then you just kind of come back to it later yeah come back to it when i'm not thinking about it as much i guess yeah i i think um in in that sense do you ever just sort of tell yourself like oh you know if i don't get the score today like the map is always going to be there for me yeah yeah i think uh oh i was i was going to say something it just <laughs> I uh -oh. forgot. Um Oh yeah, okay, I remember. I think like a really useful skill that I have is like I'm able to tell if I like like I'm able to tell if I can get the score right now. Like oh, if I, right. Like I I'll be able to tell like if I'm even if I'm getting close, I I don't know what it is, just like I can I can tell when um like if it's worth to to keep like pushing for that score right now or if i should just like leave it and do it later oh that um, that is actually really interesting cuz that that actually ties in perfectly with with what what we've sort of talked about so far that like you sort of need to know when to stop practicing a map otherwise it's yeah. it's just going to do you more harm yep yeah so do you find uh, or like do, do you think that that is sort of like the reason why you like have have gotten so good at that if that uh, makes sense I, I guess yeah um i don't really know what i did to to get good at that i i, I just kind of like learn myself over time like if i'm playing stream maps and i'm you know, I'm doing really well. I'm setting stream scores. I'm like, okay, 
I should definitely, you know, go for some some really hard scores. Or like if I'm playing like if I'm playing aim maps and then I'm just, you know, my aim's not feeling good. Okay, move on. Try a different kind of map. Oh, today's not an aim day or whatever. Just like really got to accept what kind of maps I'm playing well at in the moment. And if I want to set scores. Okay, that is interesting because so basically it seems like you sort of like figure out what kind of day it is very early so that like you don't yeah. you don't waste your time like because it, it's like you have a limited number of attempts on a certain map before like nerves and, and mind block tend to get the best of you so to speak yeah it's like you don't want to use up those plays on a day that is not like a day that you'll get that score yeah exactly okay that is interesting because I, I know um Zudi mentioned a very similar thing where you, you sort of like, I guess, diagnose your play session pretty early on and um, fi yeah. figure out which kinds of maps you should play in that session. So do you, yeah. do you um, tend to, uh, um, how do I word this, like your expectation of how you'll do in that session? Like when when you know you're having a really good stream day, like do some nerves tend to go away? Like, oh, I, I typically have a hard time with X pattern, but because I'm having a really good day with streams, then like, I'm just, you, you have that sort of confidence going into the pattern. Actually, yeah, I think uh, it, it does make my nerves better. Like, I, I don't get as nervous if I, if I'm feeling good on streams, you know, I'll um, get more confident and yeah, like the, the mind blocks are, hard parts won't get me as bad i guess because so, i know i'll be able to do it again on the next try or whatever even if i mess up oh right right so do, do you find that like confidence really plays a big role in in like countering nerves as well yes definitely oh okay can you I, I guess sort of talk about that a bit um yeah so i think uh one of the big reasons I get nervous is because like when I'm playing a map and I'm really far in, I've hit a bunch of hard stuff already. I'll be telling myself, okay, just like don't mess up for the rest of the map. Otherwise, you're going to have to hit all that hard stuff again. <laughs> um, and if I know I can hit that hard stuff again, then it won't. it's not as bad, I guess. Um, like if I, I, I don't know if that really makes sense. Um. So I, I guess like, yeah, okay. I think that makes sense. Let me let me try to, to I guess re repeat back what I understand. So like, yeah, sure. Your understanding, or like, if you're more confident in your ability to hit the hard parts again, then like you'll be less nervous about like needing to do it again if you do mess up. And so like, there's less yeah, pressure exactly. on you. So, okay. So then I guess as a result, there's less pressure to not mess up that one run and so i guess you get less nervous as a result is that right yep yeah that's yeah that's exactly right oh okay um and i <laughs> i had one other question in mind but i do not remember so um <laughs> that's okay um okay I, I i might come back to it if i remember um okay but i think around now i wanted to start taking viewer questions and we can sort of see where the conversation leads from there so sure yeah those of you listening from the discord server there is a text thread attached to the general channel called live chat you can ask your questions there and if you see um someone else's question that you would also want to get asked if you could react to it with a thumbs up emoji um so that would that would help us out a lot um but i guess before we take questions from chat frankie do you have any i guess miscellaneous things that you want to say about controlling your nerves in general or um just some some advice in a more general sense on nerve control um let me think uh i honestly i can't really think of anything okay, off no, the top no. of my head 
that, that is okay. Um, okay, so a question from BJONK says, uh, do 6.5 CS practice diffs help control your nerves? <laughs> um, I don't think they really affect my nerves. I think he's, uh, he's referring to, I, I had a CS 6.5 diff for rotor resistance. I think that's what he's referring to. Oh. I, mainly, I'd make higher CS diffs if I'm actually struggling with the pattern itself, um, just to get more consistent at it, rather than for nerves. I think. Oh, do do um, you do you find that it sort of um, helps with confidence as well, or is it just a matter of yeah, um, learning? I, I, I think it does. Okay. Um, I think like. I mean, I, I guess it's kind of obvious when you say it like this, but like if I can hit it on CS 6.5, then it's obviously going to feel easier on uh, lower CS, right? So, right. Yeah. And I, I think I personally have found as well that like if I'm messing up a pattern, um, it's sometimes hard to tell like exactly how I'm messing up, but like with smaller CS, it becomes a lot easier to tell like exactly yeah. how my aim is that off. Is true. It, yeah. So do, do you find that like when you're starting to get mind blocked, you, you try to make a smaller CS version? Um, or I guess, is it not that common uh, for you to do that? I've actually never tried make, like messing with CS for mind blocks. It's mostly just for like diff spikes. But although that is, that is actually a good idea, I might try that. Oh, all right. Keep us updated. <laughs> <laughs> um, OK, a question from l u q says have you tried changing your grip to prevent shakes from nerves or i guess do you just keep your grip the same or like have you ever tried changing it so that it's a bit more stable and you don't get shaky um, no actually i don't i don't ever really change my grip the only thing i'll change um it's not related to nerves at all, but it's like if I'm playing a jump map, I'll hold my pen higher up so it's easier to to move it quicker. Um, and if I'm playing like a stream map, I'll hold it lower. Uh, so it's more like precise. Oh, so e even even on on full area, I guess, because I, I assume that you you tend to, I guess, move your arm a lot as well to aim. Um. Uh, actually, not that much. My grip is kind of weird. Um. Oh, I don't I don't move my arm that much. I kind of just like rotate my my hand um, so my pen hits like. Oh, OK, I, I see. Like, I, I don't know if, if you've watched like the, the hand cam of any of my videos, you, you can see more what I mean. But I, I don't actually move my arm around that much. Oh, it's just the position of my pen, I guess, that changes. So you, you don't really change your grip for like stability or like to counter shakes but you do tend to change it for different kinds of maps is that uh, right yeah yeah okay exactly. i see i see um a question from zudi nader says how were your nerves during owc as a first-time player compared to the other tournaments you've played uh i mean in owc i think um i think it was definitely a lot worse um, because there's so much pressure, but actually, in like later stages, I feel like it got better. Uh, it got better over time, um, and like you get used to having a lot of people watching you and seeing you mess up. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but yeah, c compared to other tournaments, it definitely was definitely was more nerve wracking. Do you find that um, it being your first OWC? Um, especially alongside some some people that had been playing for multiple years, do you think that you being a new addition to the roster like contributed to nerves, or do you think it sort of had the opposite effect where, like we were talking about earlier, you don't have that expectation on you to be that star player, and so you didn't get as nervous? Or what do you think? I think actually like a little bit of both of that. Like I felt like. Um, if I didn't perform well, then people would be thinking, "Oh, why is this guy on the team? Like, like he we we should have picked someone else or whatever." But also at the same time, yeah, it, it made it better in the sense that even if I mess up, um, I know my team's really good, so it might not matter in the end. Oh, um, right. 
Yeah, so it's kind of a mix of both, I think. Um, and that actually reminded me of what I was going to ask earlier, which is, I guess, like having, um, I guess, so many eyes on you or like spectators. Um, it, do do you find that your nerves tend to get worse when you know that there's a lot of people watching you, or like, do, do you have any strategies for that? Um, actually, I think. <laughs> I think that doesn't really bother me that much anymore. Like I remember a while ago when I was a lot less known, like I would get nervous even if I had like one spectator. Um, but no, I think, yeah, just after like streaming a lot and, um, you know, playing a lot of tournaments, it doesn't really affect me that much knowing that a lot of people are watching anymore. So I think really, maybe there are ways to make it better but for me it was just experience oh i see yeah so just like as you got more comfortable with having people watching you then it, it didn't really like affect you as much i guess yeah yeah pretty much i i don't i don't really think about how many people are watching when i'm playing i used to definitely but yeah um Okay, um, question, another question from Social Distance asks, sometimes I get mind blocked when practicing the pool and I feel like I'll be nervous in the match if I haven't gotten a good score in practice. Is there any way to sort of work on that? Uh, for me, when I'm practicing for a pool, I think uh, it's something that gets better with practice, but like I can tell even if I haven't FC'd a map in practice, I can tell if I'm able to. Um, and if I know that I can't, or like I know around what score I'm going to get, um, like, I don't really know how to say it. Like, if I know that I can FC a map, um, then yeah, I'll, I'll be more nervous going like, okay, you have to FC this map in match. Um, but if I know that I can't, like if it's a map, I'll get 300k on. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I guess it, it, I get more nervous because uh, like I have expectations for each map and I get nervous that um, I need to meet those expectations every time. I don't really, I don't know if that really makes sense. No, no. Yeah, I, I think, I think that that does make sense. So basically like you, like per map, like even if you haven't gotten an FC in practice, you sort of assess around, I guess, like your comfort level on that map. Like, yeah, let's say it's just like a a simple aim map in the map pool, mm -hmm. and you played it in practice and you got like one random miss, but you know you can definitely FC it in the match. Yeah, and so you sort of have that expectation that like, um, a decent run for you would be FC or close to FC um uh, yeah were you saying that like that sort of expectation where you feel like you can fc and that puts a bit more pressure on you or um yeah kind of i think i think it depends obviously uh, right. again like if my score matters or not I, I guess in the sense of like if my team is like if i'm the carry of the team or if everyone on my team is good um like if oh, I'm, I see. Like if I'm the best player on the team and I know I need to FC the map, then yeah, I'll get more nervous. Um, and I, yeah, I, I guess I, that um, that that sort of plays into like seeing the leaderboard in breaks as well. I guess like yeah. having that pressure to keep your combo if you're the only one holding. Yeah, I see. Um. To answer his question, though, um, if there's a way to like work on that, I think really it's just um, you shouldn't worry so much about the scores you got in practice. Just worry more about um, like getting the score you think you can get in the match. Like, I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, um, I'm trying to word it, but I like, and that that that's sort of similar to how I see it as well. Like tournament practice. Like, you don't just take the highest score in practice and, like, that's what you're going to get in the match. I think, yeah. like, what you really need to 
focus on during your tournament practice is just getting a feel for each map. Um, and I, I guess like making sure that there's nothing that you like are misreading or something like that. Like l learn how each map goes, I think is like the number yeah. one goal of tournament practice. And then from there, like once you know how each map goes, like you can keep practicing if you want, but what you really need to focus on the most is just making sure you're playing well in the match, like on match yeah. day. Um, yeah. So get used to the maps and then um, just focus on being warmed up and, and well focused um, on match day. And, and that's going to matter a lot more than just a couple more runs on each map, I guess. Yeah, that is. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Um, right. And, and I, I guess that, that was sort of very similar to what you were saying with um just just know like each map or like know around how you can do on each map and then like sort of diagnose yourself um on match day of like what you're feeling good on um like because also for example um and i'm sure you would probably agree with this as well like if you've gotten maybe three or four fcs on a certain map in practice but then come match day, like let's say it was like a really stamina intensive map and like your stamina is just not feeling good for whatever reason that day, then like just because you have so many FCs in practice, like you might just get uh, a much worse score in the match. Yeah, so. yeah, you got to adapt to what you think you can FC in the moment. Right. Um, so. And I, I think just like having a very good understanding of how you're feeling in the moment does help a lot for nerves as well yeah because that there's I um i guess less um like mystery around or, or like uncertainty around like how you're actually going to do i guess yeah. um okay so a question from quill who asks when you have high accuracy um does that push you to get better ac and um an fc or like does it make you nervous when you have high accuracy uh again i think it it depends <laughs> actually no i think it pretty much in all cases for me it just makes me more nervous if i have really high accuracy um i think yeah if i if I have low accuracy and like I know the score is not really gonna matter, like if I'm if I'm like FCing a map with ninety six, I'll be like, okay, who cares? It's basically equivalent to having missed already. Oh because... yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I I tend to get that feeling as well. Is is that something that you sometimes use to your advantage? Like your expectations of what accuracy you could get. Like let's say you feel like you could get upwards of like 99.7 or something like that on a map and like if you're holding lower than that then you don't get as nervous at all uh i mean yeah i guess but also if i fc a map and i'm not satisfied with the accuracy i got i like i know i'm just gonna like I'll, I'll just do it again probably and so I'm i'm also telling myself that during like while I'm playing, I'm like, okay, well, if I FC with this act, it doesn't matter. I'll have to play it again anyways. Equivalent to if I had already missed, like, oh, I need to replay it to get the score I want. Oh, okay. So th does that sort of sometimes help you get that first FC on a map sometimes? Like, if that uh, makes sense? I guess, yeah. Yeah, it does. Oh, like, yeah, yeah like you sort of tend to um, be less nervous when you have lower act. And then that leads to an FC. And then at least in my experience, what tends to happen is like once I get that one FC, then I get a lot less nervous about FCing that map again. Yeah. Yeah. That happens to me too. Um, that is fairly common. Right. Um, okay. So another um, question. Um, actually, th this one comes from the form of. Um, questions the the google form um and this question is from hist who asks um how do you deal with palm sweating so first of all like is, is that something that happens to you like when your palms get sweaty while you're nervous uh yeah it, it does usually what i do um because like i i use uh 
I use a CTL 672 and that I think the pen for that is known for being slippery and unstable. So whenever I get like a hint of sweat on my fingers, like my pen will just slip out of my hand while I'm playing. And then pr pretty much what I do is I just go wash my hands and it, it fixes it. Oh, yeah. Sweat off. Me too. <laughs> um, hey, so I, I also wanted to ask okay actually before i ask that um i guess i'm also curious are there any other things that you've tried in the past for like palm sweatiness that like i, I guess you, you sort of stopped doing after a while uh no i don't think oh, i think okay. i like I, I just washed my hands <laughs> i okay. don't know it fixes it for me um so okay so this I'm I'm actually not sure. Uh, do you play with your interface um, on like where you can see your combo and and accuracy and stuff? Um, sometimes in tournaments I always have it off. Um, and also on long maps I always have it off. But if I'm playing like short maps, it doesn't really bug me that much. Oh. Um, yeah. Um. So. Uh, cause th there's a question from the forum as well, um, from I like random who asks during break sections of maps, your score shows up regardless of if you have the HUD hidden or not. Uh, I get extremely nervous after seeing those scores, especially in tournaments. Is there a way to not feel nervous when looking at your score on the leaderboard? Um, I get that I can just not look in the first place, but, um, I, I tend to get very curious and I always want to see how I'm doing when I have some time to relax. So like during breaks, do you have any tips for not getting nervous or too in your head about like the leaderboard, especially in tournaments, but also I guess in solo play? Um I think uh well this is a actually a piece of advice I took from from Nick a while back. Um I know that his mentality when he's playing a map is that um, you should treat, like, even though you've hit the diff spike, whatever, you've hit the hard part of the map, like, it's not over until you see the score screen. Like, you can't lose lose your focus, I guess. Um, and so, like, even if you, you're in a break, you see you have a really high combo, like, the map's not over yet. You can't, like, like you, you can't get nervous yet. You can't <laughs> celebrate, whatever, like... I don't know. I feel like that that has helped me a little bit. Oh, right. So so I, I guess um that that sounds a bit similar to I guess this mentality of like you don't really have the score until the result screen comes, for example. Like like you don't have an FC. You just kind of you are FCing, but like you you can't like get complacent too early. Yeah, so to exactly. Speak. Oh, okay. I see. And so in that sense, especially in, in tournament play, um, like just, just because say like you, um, are in the lead, for example, um, I guess like you, you, you still have to just focus on doing your best. Yeah. And like, I guess you can't really, uh, th think about, um, the, the results screen or like who's, who's actually in the lead or not. Um, cause I, I guess like ultimately no one is in the lead or not in the lead until the map ends so to speak. yeah i was actually about to say that right <laughs> like in a tournament even if you have a higher score than your opponent right now it doesn't mean anything until the map is over like it doesn't matter if you were winning at the break or not it matters if you you're winning when the map's over <laughs> oh so, i see yeah so like it, it, in that sense i, I think it, it that does actually sometimes help with um feeling like oh i'm in the lead um or like i'm not in the lead when you look at it in the break cuz in reality it's like it it doesn't actually matter <laughs> yeah yeah exactly i see i see um okay sounds good um i think okay so let's i think take one more question um okay that um i guess um, uh, you, you, I guess maybe you might not have an answer for this, but 
I'm I'm a bit curious. So this question comes from Flame Blade, who asks, is there something that you consciously do or or focus on in order to reduce or eliminate nerves? So like maybe things that you tell yourself or like you try to focus on a specific thing to, so that you um, don't get, don't let your nerves get the best of you? Or is there anything that you sort of do consciously to avoid that? Um, I don't think there's very much. Um, I already said this, but um, yeah, like when I'm FCing a map or I'm getting nervous, I look back and I say, okay, I've already hit the hard part. Like I've already hit all, all of this map already i don't want to do it again so just set the score now so you don't have to do it again i guess that, that that's the one thing i do consciously while i'm playing oh i see yeah but that might not work for everybody <laughs> actually that now that i think about it that that's something that i don't think i've, I've actually experimented with that much so that is very interesting i will have to i, I will let you know if i ever um if <laughs> i ever use good. that <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, with that, I think that is a good point to wrap things up. Um, and I, I think you said you'll be back here on Friday as well for the final interview. Yeah. Right. Yeah, okay. For awesome. Sure. Um, so yeah, for now we're going to wrap things up, but that was, that was very, very insightful. I would say, um, especially I think like part, part of, um, I think part of the reason why, um, like I think these interviews can be so helpful, um, not necessarily to have like you know give everyone all the answers for controlling your nerves, but sometimes just to give people a real reality check. Like, um, yeah, even like some of the most high stakes players um, deal with the same kinds of nerves as you, um, and you know we're yeah. we're all sort of in this together, <laughs> um, so. Yeah, overall, I think you probably helped out a lot of players. And those so of you <laughs> yeah, those of you listening on uh, YouTube, first of all, um, thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. But um, if you enjoyed, if you want to support us, the best way you can do that would be um, to like the video and subscribe to the channel because that helps us out a lot. Um, and if you want to be directly involved, with um, OC University as a whole, and as well as these interviews, definitely join our Discord server. Um, that's where you can stay the most connected, you can ask questions live, things like that. Um, but yeah, other than that, definitely check out um, Frankie on Twitch and social media. I think your social media accounts are still Rupertian, right? Um, yeah, most of them. Okay, so <laughs> twitch.tv slash Rupertian go. Um, check that out and that that will be linked in the description as well um but uh yeah those of you listening live we we appreciate you a lot um stick around um or stay tuned for the final interview that will be happening tomorrow um and those of you who are watching this maybe on youtube in the future uh check out the oc university youtube channel where that is probably uploaded by the time you're listening to this um but yeah, check out the other interviews as well. But other than that, uh, that is going to wrap things up. But thank you so much again, Frankie. That was awesome. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you. Okay, see you next time, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.